Hi guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Teacher Jam, Lokbanin Buslog. For today, what we're going to discuss is the Module 4 of Cookery and C2. So, ano ba yung Module 4? It's the Prepare Cereals and Starch Dishes. Okay, yesterday we have been discussed the Module 3 about the uh, Prepare Egg Dishes. So, today naman po, ang gagawin natin is ang pagpe-prepare ng cereal and starch dishes. Excited na ba kayo? Okay guys, bago kayo ma-excite, <clears throat> I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel guys. Hi, welcome po sa mga kakadating lang sa aking o kakabisit lang sa aking YouTube channel. See, please do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment po sa aking uh, YouTube channel. And guys, wag nyong kalimutan i-click ang notification bell para po ma-notify kayo for my upcoming videos. Okay, so let us now move on and go on to this module. So dito po sa ating module, it covers the prepare cereal and starch dishes, perform miss and plus. Ayan, mag-miss and, and uh, mi perform miss and plus po tayo. After going through this e-module, you are expected to discuss the ingredients in the preparations of various types of starch and cereal dishes. Prepare the tools, equipments, and ingredients based on prescribed standards and show appreciation on the preparation of various types of starch and cereal dishes. So let us now move to and discuss the perform miss and plus. Okay, guys, how are we going to pronounce the miss and plus? So, as, as you can see here, mise en plus. Ayan, the mise en plus. So, the mise en plus is a French term for having all your ingredients measured, cut, peeled, sliced, grated, etc. Before you start cooking, pans are prepared, mixing bowls and tools and equipments are set out, and uh, it is the technique chefs use to assemble meals so quickly and effortlessly. So, ito po yung tinatawag natin perform the mise en place. We, we have to gather all the mixing bowls, the tools and equipments that we need to, to set. And, and also, we have to prepare all kinds or, or ingredients before we start cooking. And uh, do, by doing that, by doing so, ibig sabihin po, mas nalilesen at mas mabilis natin nagagawa yung ating trabaho. Okay? I hope you get that, guys. So, for uh, bago tayo mag-start ng ating lesson, kindly please answer the question. Okay, guys. Answer, I-answer muna nyo itong ating pretest. So, what is miss and plus? O yan, kakasabi ko lang kanina. May tip na kayo. So, you have already a point for that. What are the nutritional value and components of a cereals and starch dishes? Okay, guys. Kindly please answer. I'll give you a minute and a second for answering that. Okay, guys, after answering that, so kindly please guess naman nito. Oh, guessing game naman tayo. Kindly please fill in the missing letters. Okay, guess the word based on the given definition and each number. And write the missing letters on or off the word inside the letter blocks below the definition. Number one, it is a long chain-like molecule, sometimes called the linear fraction. And it has or produced by a linking together 500 to 2,000 glucose molecules. Ano kaya yung nawawalang letter dito? Ayan. So, hindi ko sasabihin kasi baka magkaroon kayo ng points agad. So, hulaan po ninyo yan. Number two, it is a polysaccharide made up of hundreds or even thousands of glucose molecules joined together. Ayan, ito palagi nyo itong nagagamit. So, alam nyo na agad kung anong sagot dito. Meron na agad idea. So, for number three, the sum of changes that occurs in the first stages of heating starch granules in a moist environment, which includes a swelling of granules as water as absorbed and disruption of the organized granule structure. So, ano kaya yung, yung uh, sagot sa missing letters na to? So, medyo mahaba, pero ang ganda ng sagot na to, guys. Yes. Okay. So, after answering that, let us now move to our discussion. Ano ba yung mga tools and equipments na kailangan natin gamitin sa pagluluto ng 
pagpe-prepare ng starch and cereal dishes. Okay, guys. The success of cooking starch and cereal dishes depends on the proper tools and equipments used in the preparation of food. The preparation of starch and cereal dishes requires the various tools and equipment below. So, naan dito. Each tool must be used according to its function. So, lahat po ng, ng, ng ipapakita ko sa inyong equipment and tools ay may kanyang-kanyang functions. Number one po is a mixing bowl. Alam na alam niyo na po kung ano ang itsura at kung saan ginagamit ang isang mixing bowls. ba? Diba? So, ang mixing bowls po ay yung parang plangga na ano. So, yan po yung mga mixing bowls. Para lang, it's a look like. O kaya ay para siyang uh, sulyaw na medyo malaki-laki. Ayan. So, yan po ang itsura ng ating mixing bowl. Number two is sifter. So, ano naman tong sifter? Ito po yung tinatawag natin sa Tagalog ay salaan. So, ibig sabihin, sinasala po natin dito yung mga dry ingredients tulad ng flour, sugar, baking powder, powdered ingredients to retain the finer textures. So, yung pong, kaya po sinasala natin kasi meron po sa mga, kunyari sa harina or cornstarch, may mga buo-buo po siya, ano, buo-buo particles o kaya ay buo-buo ang flour. Kaya po sinasala natin. So, tinatanggal natin yun para hindi mapasama. Kasi pag naluto na, niluto natin siya or nag-bake tayo, uh, makikita nyo po sa cake ninyo ay buo pa rin yung harina. So, that is why we need to sift the flour. Okay. Another one is the war whip. Ayan, ito po yung war whip natin. The beat, uh, this is used for beating the egg whites and egg yolk, creams, o kaya ay mayonnaise. Ayaw, panghalo natin ng ng ating butter mixture. Ayan. Yan po yung ating war whip o tanatawag nating war whisk. Okay. Wooden spoon. Ayan. Alam na alam natin ang wooden spoon. This is for mixing creams, butter, and the, for tossing the salad. Tinotoss natin ganyan. Ayan. That is the, the way for tossing. Okay. The slotted spoon. Pag sinabi nating slotted po, ito yung mga may butas-butas. Ayan. Kung makikita nyo sa picture. Ayan. Slotted. Ano? So, magkaiba yung perforated sa slotted. So, ang slotted spoon po is used to uh, separate solid particles from the soup. So, ibig sabihin po, pag may sabaw at may laman, kunyari, meron kang nilutong uh, mall soup. So, di ba yung mall soup may buo-buong ano? So, ibig sabihin, pag kinuha natin yung molo, naiiwan yung sabaw. So, that is why, para po, uh, may ihuwalay nga siya. So, ang tawag natin doon ay, or ang use nito is for steering purposes. Ano po? So, yan. And meron tayong tinatawag na blending fork. Ito po yung itsura ng blending fork. Use for testing the tenderness of meat, combining the big cuts and particles of meat and vegetable for blending and other ingredients with flour. Yan po. And this one is the rubber scraper. Usually, this, this was used or uh, this is uh, used for scraping up mixtures of uh, the butter, sugar, and egg from the sides of the mixing bowl. Ibig sabihin, pang said po natin ito dun sa mga natirang mixtures dun sa bowls or sa mixing bowls. Strainer. Ito yung isang strainer na malaki-laki. Unlike dun sa isang pinakita ko po sa inyo na strainer din. Ano yung salaan? So, ito pong strainer na ito, para naman po ito for the liquids, ano po, for fine or solid food particles tulad ng coco cream from the coconut and tamarind extract. So, uh, kung, kung ang inyo po, tulad nga ng coconut, di ba may mga buo-buo siya. Kumbaga yung, yung, uh, uh, kumbaga ay yung niyadjad galing sa coconut. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinala natin, so maiiwan nga diyan yung mga particles na malalaki. Okay, tapos yung po na nasasalang maigi yung liquid. So, hindi siya napapasama dun sa naisala na. And we have the tongs. So, itong tongs naman po ay for handling of hot foods para hindi ka mapaso. Ano, para mas easy siyang kunin. Kunyari, nagigrill ka po ng hotdog o ng pork. So, gamitin mo yung tongs para hindi ka mapaso. We have measuring cups. So, itong measuring cups naman po, we, we use this to measure the dry ingredients and of course, the liquid ingredients. But, uh, usually po, uh, uh, mas, mas okay po uh, itong measuring cups natin. Mas ginagamit natin siya for the dry ingredients only. Tapos po, yung measuring cups natin na ginagamit uh, yung for liquid, yun yung parang pitser or pitchel na maliit lang. 
So, yun po ay for liquid, ano po, liquid purposes, to, to measure the liquid ingredients. Okay? So, I hope you understand that po. So, we have the measuring spoons. So, pag measuring spoons naman po, we measure the dry and liquid ingredients which require a little amount, amount lamang tulad ng the baking powder, the baking soda, the salt, yan, uh, the vanilla, ayan po, o kaya ay vinegar, any kind po, basta po, small amount lang or little amount. That's why we use the measuring spoon. Pag sinabi naman natin saucepans and pots, ito po yung itsura ng saucepans and pots natin. This is used for meat and fish dishes with the gravy and sauces. We use this to cook a sauces. Ano po, ginagamit natin yan. And we have the kettle and the rice cooker. So, kilala na po natin yung kettle. Ito po yung sumisipul ba Kumbaga, yung initan natin ng tubig. Ayan. Siyempre, kilala na natin ang rice cooker kasi sa bahay naman, we have that. And we have a pressure cooker. So, ibig sabihin po, pag sinabing pressure cooker, ito ginagamit natin to tenderize or to cook the meat chicken or the other grains or legumes such as mongo or white beans para po mas malesen yung time natin o mas speed up yung time natin sa pagluluto nang ano man, uh, kung anong ating lulutuin, like the chicken or the meat. Especially po, if you want to make, uh, kumbaga yung maglalabog tayo, ano maglalaga tayo, and we use baka, we use kalabaw, we use any kind ng, 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 ng karne na gusto mong to fasten, to fast track sa pagluluto. So, gamit tayo ng pressure cooker. Yes. And bago kayo gumamit ng pressure cooker, be sure to eat na nabasa nyo muna yung manuals how to use the pressure cooker. Kasi baka mamaya gumamit kayo ng pressure cooker, biglang uh, pagkatapos yung gamitin, binuksan nyo agad. So hindi po ganun. Kailangan natin i-cool down muna siya. Ano, i-cool down muna siya bago buksan. Kasi sasabog siya. What I mean sasabog is mag, magpa-fountain siya. Pagkabukas mo, shh, splash out. Okay. So that's why mag-ask muna or read read the manuals bago gamitin ang isang equipment or tools. Okay. Ito po, we have a double boiler. Ito yung uh, uh, ginagamit natin on preparing a sauces. Ano po? Preparing a sauces. So, it is directly uh, cooked sa stove po. So, meron kang pans, then ipatong mo yung another pans para po, yan, double boiler na siya. Halimbawa po, magluluto tayo ng, gagawa tayo ng ganache. Ganache ano, gagawa tayo ng ganache. Ano yung ganache? Ibig po sabihin yung ganache po, yung cream po siya, para, uh, cream sauce, para po pang, pang lagay mo sa cake. Yan, yung po mga chocolate. So, ang tawag po dun is ganache. So, dapat po pag mag, mag, uh, <clears throat> magtutunaw ka ng chocolate, so, ang ginagamit po talaga is double boiler. Hindi po siya directly niluluto sa sa apoy or sa stove kasi masusunog siya. So that's why ang ang pagluluto o paggawa ng ganache ay kailangan ay yung steam, yung usok nang gagaling dun sa sa init ng ano ng tubig. No, ano po? So ganyan lang. So yun po yung paggamit natin ng double boiler. So we have steamer. So kailan kailan na natin yung steamer? This is just Used for cooking food by steaming. So, lahat po ng any kind na gusto nyong i-steam, so we use this steamer. Ito po, isang uri pa rin ng salaan, yung colander. So, magkaiba po sila, ang sifter, ang, uh, ang sifter at saka strainer, at saka po itong colander. So, may, they have different functions. Ano po, magkakaiba sila ng functions. Yung sifter po, sinisift siya, kumbaga yung mga uh, medyo very fine, fine lang po siya yung mga flour, yung mga dry ingredients. Pag naman po yung uh, strainer, ine-strain naman po yung mga may mga malalaking particles. So, para hindi siya sumama. So, ibig sabihin, we use to strain, ano po, nila hiwalay natin yung liquid dun sa particles. Pag ito naman pong colander, it is a perforated bowls by uh, of varying sizes made of stainless steel, aluminum, or plastic, use drain, wash, or cook ingredients from liquid. Example natin, kunyari, gag, mag, nagluto tayo ng pasta, ano, spaghetti pasta. So, yan. Diyan po natin nilalagay yung ating pasta to strain. Ano po, para masala siya. So, we use the colander. 
Pag sinabi naman po natin na canister, ito po yung mga lalagyan natin ng mga uh, ingredients, uh, dry ingredients to keep our ingredients dry and uh, free from uh, bad bacteria or or vermins or kung ano ba man insects. So that's why dapat po in uh, lahat po ng ating mga ingredients ay nakahiwalay or isinasali natin sa isang canister or food the uh, container para po ma-maintain and safe na uh, safety ng ating product or ng ating food. Butcher knife. So ito po yung itsura ng butcher's knife. Ano, this is used for cutting section in and trimming the raw mater raw meats. So kayang-kaya niya pong gayatin even yung mga buto-buto. Kaya po butcher's knife. Okay. So we have the channel channel knife or channel knife. So ito po, it is a kind of hand tool used generally in decorative or decorative work such as a making garnishes. So pang design, ano po, yan. Yan po yung channel knife. Okay, so we have the sources of starch. Ano ba yung sources ng starch natin? The parts of plants that store most starch are seeds, roots, and tubers. Thus, the most common uh, sources of food starch are ito po. We have the cereal grains, including corn, wheat, rice, grains, sorghum, and oats. So we have the legumes and roots or tubers, including potato, sweet potato, arrowroot, and the tropical cassava plant. So, yan. Ito po yung mga sources ng starch natin. So, we have the common source of manufactured food starch. So, we have uh, 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 common source. So, meron tayong potato, may corn, at saka tapioca. Yung tapioca po, we call that a cassava. Okay? So, maganda lang po yung pangalan niya. Pero yung tapioca po, it is a cassava. So, we have a name starches after its plant sources. So, kapag po sinabing corn starch, saan siya nang galing? So, syempre, from corn. Pag sinabi naman pong rice starch, syempre, from the word rice. Kapag po tapioca, it is from cassava. So, yan po yung mga starches sa uh, name after the plant sources. So, I hope you understand po so, meron naman tayo mga classifications of starches or starch. So, we have a native and a, or natural starch. So, ito po ay refers to the starches uh, as originally derived from its plant source. And modified starches are starches that have been al altered physically or chemically or modify one or more of its key chemicals and or physical property. So, we have a purified starch. So, may be separated from grains and tubers. And by a process called wet milling. So this procedure employs a various techniques of grinding, screening, and centrifuging to separate the starch from fiber, oil, and or the protein. So that is the classifications of starch. So we have the native or the natural starch. We have the modified starches. We have the purified starches. So, I hope you understand po about the classifications of starches. So, we have, uh, let's moving on to the starch composition and structure. So, we have the starch molecule. So, when we say the starch, it is a polysaccharide made of a hundreds or even thousands of glucose molecules, which is joined together. So, these molecules are starch are are have two general types which call the fractions. So meron tayong it is divided or they have a two general types. So we call that uh, amylus and amylopectin. So ano ba tong amylus at saka amylopectin? When we say amylus, this is a long chain like molecules and sometimes called the linear fractions and is produced by linking together a 500 to 2000 glucose molecules. So, yan po yun. And the amylose fractions of starch contributes getting characteristic to cook and cooled starch mixtures. So, we have a gel. So, when we say a gel, this is a rigid to a certain degree and hold a shape when molded. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na, na kanina yung dun sa pretest natin. So, uh, produce a linking together with the 500 to 2,000 uh, glucose molecules. Ano, so, so tandaan nyo niya. So, this is the, we call that a amylose. Okay, the amylose. 
So next one is we have the amylopectin. Ano kaya itong amylopectin na sinasabi natin? So it has a highly branched bushy type of structure. It is a very different from the long string like molecules of amylose. So in both amylose and amylopectin, however, the basic building unit is a glucose. So we have a cohesion of thickening properties which are attributed by amylopectin when the starch mixture is cooked in the presence of, so may presence of water, but this fraction does not produce a gel. Not unlike the amylose, because the amylose, they, they produ produce or they produce a gel. So unlike the amylopectin, it does not produce a, a gel. So, okay, so I hope you understand the starch molecule. Oh, yes. So, masyado bang mabilis? So, okay. Okay lang yun. Kaya kaya nyo. Kasi we have so many things to discuss. Diba? Yes. Okay, let's now move on. So, most natural starches are mix mixtures of the two fractions. So, we have, we have the corn, the meat, the rice. Yan. Potato, tapioca, starches, which contain 24 to 16% of the amylose. So with the remainder being amylopectin. So the root starches of tapioca and the potato are lower in amylose content than the cereal starches of corn, wheat, and the rice. Yes. So yan po yung uh, uh, percentage that uh, that the starches contains ano for the amylose yeah okay na intindihan ba okay that's great so let us now move to the starch granule pag sinabi nating starch granule in the storage areas of plants notably the seeds and the roots molecules of starch are deposited in tiny organized units which is called granules so, yung granules, tiny deposited, ibig sabihin yung mga very tiny roots mo, yung maliliit na part, parang particle. So, we call that a granules. O, example natin, ha, yung uh, ang granules, example na itsura ng granules, yung ano ito, yung parang sa magic sarap. Ano, ano, that is a granules. Yun, granules ang tawag doon. Okay? The amylose and amylopectin molecules are placed together in a tightly packed stratified layers formed around a center spot in the granule called the helum. Helum hilum. Ano? So, yan. Yun yung tawag. And then the starch molecules are systematically structured in the granule to form crystalline or crystalline-like patterns. Yan. If the starch granules... Uh, in a water suspensions are observed with the uh, microscopically under pol polarized light. The highly oriented structure causes the light to be rotated so that the Maltese cross patterns on each granule is uh, being observed. So, yeah. And this phenomenon is called the barfringens. Ayan. So, the pattern disappears when the starch mixture is heated and the structure disrupted, and the sizes and shapes of granules differ among starches from bar sources, but all the starch granules are microscopic in size. Yes, it is all microscopic because of the size. Very, very, very tiny. And uh, let us now move to the... Ano ba yung uh, percentage na makukuha natin in the potato, kasaba, the wheat, and the cornstarch? So, these are the percentages ano po, na nakukuha natin. So, starch properties and reactions. So, meron tayong tinatawag na gelatinization. Yan. Itong gelatinization, it is the sum of changes that occurs in the first stage of heating starch granules in the moist environment, which includes swelling of granules as, as the water is absorbed and disruption of the organized granule structure. So, di ba? Uh, kumbaga, pag tayo ay uh, nag, uh, nalagyan natin yung, kunyari, yung starch or flour, so nilagyan natin ng a little of, uh, a bit of water, Diba ina-absorb nila yon Tapos, uh, after ma-absorb, ano, 
yung natutunaw siya. ba? Diba? Nag-granule structure muna siya. Nag-organize muna siya into a granules. After that, maya-maya, nag, uh, ano na siya, natutunaw na siya. And then once we, uh, once we pour sa, kunyari, may niluluto tayo, ano, once we pour, nag-gelatinize na siya, nag-gelatinize na siya. So, nabubuo. So, yan. Kaya we call that a gelatinization. Kasi, nagiging compact siya. Siya yung, para bang, siya yung nag, naghahawak para maging close tight sila. That's why the gelat, gelatin, yung gelatin nagiging uh, buo-buo. Ano? So, viscosity. The resistance to flow increase the thickness and consistency when the newly gelatinized starch is stirred. Yan. Yun nga. Pag na-stirred natin, ano, more swollen grounds break and more starch molecules spill causing increase to viscosity or thickness. So, ang starch and flour natin, once we, nag, yun nga yung kinasabi ko kanina, once na nag tayo, niluluto natin ng kung ano man yung gusto natin lutuin, nagkakaroon siya ng viscosity or thickness. So, nagtitiken siya. So, that is the viscosity. And the changes in the gelatinization of starch are the hydration and swelling to several times our original size, the loss of the brief uh, varfringens, and the increase in clarity, the mark rapid increase in consistency and attainment of peak and dissolutions of linear molecules and diffusion from ruptured granules and with heat removal retrograde graduation of mixture to a paste-like mass of shell. So, yan. Yeah. Di ba kung kayo nagluluto, guys, ng ano, nagagawa kayo ng gelatin, di ba? So, di ba once na, di ba may granules yun? Kunyari, bumili kayo ng, ng isang pack of gelatin, magugawa, magagawa, you are going to cook or prepare a, um, kunyari, anong tawag nyo yun? Coffee jelly ba yun? Yes, the coffee jelly, ano. So, Diba may makikita nyo pa buo-buo pa siya. So that is a granules pa. Granules pa siya, diba? So once na nilagyan natin siya ng water, nagpo-form siya, diba? Nag-organize siya. Kumbaga yung, yung granules, inaabsorb ni granules yung water, inaabsorb niya. Tapos natutunaw siya, then they form, nagpo-form na sila. Then nagiging thicken na, diba? Nag may viscosity na. And then after that, kapag inihalo mo na siya, so mas nagiging gel na siya, ano, paste-like mass of gel. So, yan po yung reaction o, o reaction ng isang gelatinization of a starch. Okay, I hope you understand that po. So, the type of sugar influences the temperature and rate of gelatinization. The effect of the sugar is attributed to competition of for water. So, it was observed that the sugar actually interacts with the amorphous areas of the starch granules. The different sweeteners added to starch gel preparation. So, we meron tayong other gel preparations. Ano, sweeteners added, sorry. So, we have the honey, molasse, molasses, the panutsa, yung panutsa, nakakita na ba kayo nun? Yung, yung kulay brown na bilog. Bilog siya. Our granulated sugar, which starch molecules, particularly the amylose fractions, reassociate or bond together in an ordered structure after disruption of gelatinization, ultimately a crystalline, a crystalline order appears. So, yan. And ano naman tong uh, synergesis? The synergesis oozing of liquid from gel. Uh, when cut out and allowed to stand, example natin yung jelly or baked custard, yan. The oozing of liquid from uh, a rigid gel, sometimes called the whipping. So, may mga reactions na, may mga reactions that occurs in all kinds of jet, tulad ng puddings, jellies, custard, gelatin, agar-agar. So, eto po yun. And how about the dextrinization? So, ito is the process of forming dextrin. So, pag sinabi natin dextrin, this is partially hydrolyzed starches that are prepared by dry roasting. Ano? Dry roasting. In home kitchens, the dextrinization is achieved by toasting aid the flour for uh, the polvoron, rice flour for kare-kare, ano, kare-kare sauce, and the uh, bread slices for breakfast. Yan. And we have also the hydrolysis. 
These are the starches undergo hydrolysis during cooking or processing and during storage of the food where the, the chemical reaction in which a molecular linkage is broken and a molecule of water is being utilized. So prolonged heating of starches with acid will promote the hydrolysis. So this can happen when cooking an acidic food such as pineapple pie resulting in a reduced viscosity of ferments of the pie filling. So, yan po. So, may acid siya. Ano? Kapag may acid, yan, it promotes the hydrolysis. Yan. Kapag po na po prolong, kapag masyadong matagal, prolong heating of starches. Ngayon, pag nag, na, napatagal ang process ng heating natin sa mga starches, so, uma, uh, nagkakaroon siya ng acid. Ano po? Nagkakaroon siya ng acid. With acid. That promotes hydrolysis. Ayan. Functional properties of starches. So the starch play various role in food, a typical multitasker. So meron tayong thickeners in gravy, sauces, and pudding. It absorbs water, become a gel when cooked. Yes, oo. Kung mapapansin ninyo, pag tayo nagluluto ng sauces or gravies, di ba? So nagtitiken siya. Colloidal stabilizers, moisturizer retainer, moisture retainer, gel forming agents, binders, package, and flavor carriers. It is ability to trap oils and fats which absorb flavoring substances more efficiently. Okay, guys. So, those are the functional properties of the starch. Pag sinabi natin starches, ito naman ay yung ato uh, added to processed meats tulad ng luncheon meats, hot dog sauces, and others. So, as a filler, binder, moisture, and retainer of the fat substitute. Kasi po, di ba yung, yung mga luncheon meat, hot dog sausages, they are, they are meats, di ba? Processed meats. So, durog-durog na siya. So, para mabind siya, para maging itsura siyang hot dog, luncheon meat, sausages. So, kailangan ng starches para to bind. Ano? Filler binder siya. So, kumbaga para ma-form na siya. Ano? Hindi siya maghiwa-hiwalay. Okay? So, the quality characteristics of the starch itself depends upon which role or function it was used. So, the cereal is any grain that is used for food. Grain, so uh, especially whole grains, is not just empty calories. These are very valuable and can contribute a great deal to your health. And you should include at least four serving from this food group each day. Yeah. So, we have the cereal processed food. So, meron tayong whole grain cereal. So, itong whole grain cereal product has a retain, uh, it retains the specific nutrients of the whole unprocessed grain and contains natural proportions of bran, germ, and endosperm. So, enriched cereals. Ito naman yung mga excellent sources of the thiamine, niacin, refoblabin, and iron. Yan. Ito namang restored cereal naman, it is made from either the entire grain or portions of one or more grains to which were have been added sufficient amounts of, ayan, tayami, niacin, iron, and then uh, attain niya, uh, attain the, the whole grain levels. Ano? So, na, meron itong three nutrients na, meron kang nutrients na makukuha dito, ano, yung original, sa original grain, and then, Ah, uh, yun. Kung kaya nga, ano, restored cereal. So, meron tayong cereals provide by the body. So, ayan, ito yung pag kumain tayo ng cereals. Ano? So, ito yung nakukuha natin. Carbs, protein, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, cellulose, or rugage. So, ayan. Yan po yung mga nutritive value na pwede natin makuha from the cereals. So, the nutritional significance of noodles naman and pasta or alimentary paste. So, these are the psychological functions of noodles and pasta that will depend on its starch and other constitu constituents. So, since this is the basic, basic starch food, the nutritional, nutritional significance discussed for starches is also applies. So, in addition, so including the resistance of starches, uh, the noodles and pasta may contain other fibers and some proteins and fat as well. So, ito yung nakukuha nating nutritive value from, uh, in this, uh, from noodles and pasta. 
So, meron siyang water, protein, fat, carbon, calcium, phosphorus, iron, thiamine, rifoblobin, and niacin. So, yun yung meron tayong nutritive value. Uh, the, nutri the nutritive value that we could get from the uh, pasta or the alimentary paste. Ano po? And uh, of course, uh, meron tayo mga dried noodles and pasta tulad na macaroni. So, I hope nakilala nyo itong mga to. Macaroni, spaghetti, pancit, bihong, sotanghon, miki, chicken mami, canton linguini, lasagna, and miswa. So, I hope nakilala nyo sila. So, if, we, if hindi nyo sila kilala, mag, magpakilala kayo sa mga ito. Kasi they are so very friendly naman. Pakilala kayo sa mga dried noodles and pasta pag hindi nyo siya kilala. Okay? So now, so since that we already done with our discussion, so uh, what have you learned from our discussion for today? So di ba napaka-iksi lang? Pinaikli ko na yung discussions natin kasi alam nyo talaga in, in the real life, kung tayo face-to-face, -face, ay nako guys, it's so mahaba talaga itong discussion ng, ng eggs, prepare eggs at saka ng cereal and starch dishes. Guys, promise, it's so mahaba talaga. But today, since uh, uh, we have the online learning, the modular, so pina mas pinaikli kung ano yung mga important uh, matters that you have to learn. So, eto na siya. But, uh, before I say anything, ano po? So, these are the things that you need to keep in mind, guys. So, uh, the success of cooking starch and cereal dishes depends on the proper tools and equipment used in the preparation of food. Oh, oh. And the preparation of starch and cereal dishes requires the various tools and equipment and each tool must be used according to its functions. Of course, huwag kayong gagamit ng isang tools and equipment na hindi naman applicable para doon. And the parts of the plants that store most starch are needs roots and tubers. Starches are named after its plant sources. So, still remember that? Corn starch from the name? From what? Corn. Yes, correct. And how about the rice starch? Anyone? Rice starch. From? Rice. Yes. And how about the tapioca? Anyone? What is tapioca? Cassava. Yes, correct. Okay. So, the starch is polysaccharide made up of hundreds or even thousands of glucose molecules joined together. O ba, di ba? Sabi ko kanina, they produce a, uh, they have a 500 to 2,000, di ba? And the molecules of starch are two, they have two general types. What, is, what are those? We, we call the fractions of amylose and amylopectin. So, tandaan niyo yan, guys. So, and uh, for the last, the physiological functions of the noodles and pasta will depend on its starch and other constituents. So, since it, it is the basically the starch food, the nutritional significance discusses for starches is also applies. Ano-ano ba yung mga naaalala yung nutritive value that we could get from the uh, starches? Sige nga. Ano po yung mga nutritive value na nakukuha natin? So, we could get the water, the carbs, ano, protein, ano pa, niacin, rifoblobin, ayan, yung mga yan. Pwede nating makuha sa starches. Akala nyo wala tayong nakukuha ang nutritive value, but as you heard, as you heard a while ago, there are so many nutritive value that we could get from the starches and cereals, okay? Even in pastas, ano po? Okay, so I hope you learned more for today. So for now, I would like you to answer the post test, our assessment. So this is very easy because what you are going to do is to write the true or false only. So can you please answer the 1 to 10? I'll give you a minute for answering that. Okay, guys, after answering our post test, so I would like to say bye-bye, uh, everyone. See you next time. And 
keep safe, stay safe, and God bless everyone. So please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Teacher Jam saying, mag, sabi ni Kuya Ki, mag-aral ng mabuti upang ang buhay ay bumuti. Bye! Hi guys! Welcome back to you. Eh, ulit.